Good afternoon everyone and welcome to this webinar which is an introduction to the harmonized BHPS and Understanding Society data. My name is Simon Parker, I'm based at the UK Data Service and the User Support Team and I'm joined here with uh, Laura Fumagali from the Institute for Social and Economic Research and I'd like to say thank you to Deborah Walsh um, for preparing these slides. Okay, so in this webinar we're going to be uh, looking at the harmonization project for the BHPS, British Household Panel Survey, and Understanding Society. Um, Laura's going to be talking to you about that. I'm going to then speak to you about how you access this data through the UK Data Service, how you find support, where you find the documentation, and further help that you might need. We will have time for some questions at the end. Um, you'll notice on the right-hand side of your screen, you should have a questions box. If you type in your questions there, we'll do our best to answer them. Of course, there are quite a few people joining us today. If we don't have time to answer your question within the time, we'll email you an answer. Okay, so a quick introduction. The British Household Panel Survey um, started in 1991. There are 18 waves, taking us up to 2009. And really, it's a, a, a research resource which looks at um, behavioral and social changes and economic changes in households and individuals across this period. This was then followed up with Understanding Society, which has a slightly wider range of topics covered and a much larger uh, sample. There's approximately 40,000 households have been involved in Understanding Society, making it one of the largest uh, surveys of its type in the world. Now these are both multi-topic household panel surveys, so they're following the same households across the period of time. And as obviously multi-topic, it's covering a wide range of issues. So you can actually use this data for many different research questions. When the BHPS came to an end, the members were invited to join the Understanding Society study, and they did so from wave two of the study. Approximately 6,007 households uh, agreed to continue as part of the Understanding Society cohort um, out of around 8,000 households who were at the BHPS in the last wave. Now these studies are designed to be used together and there has actually been a harmonization project undertaken in order to facilitate research um, which is combining studies. So for the households who were part of the BHPS and joined Understanding Society, you should be able to get around 25 to 26 years of data for those households. Now, I'm going to hand you over to my colleague, Laura, who's going to talk to you uh, in much more detail about the harmonization project. Okay, good afternoon. Um, this afternoon, I'm gonna tell you about what the BHPS Understanding Pro Society Harmonization Project is. A bit about the principles, the consequences of those principles, a bit of about the research which has been carried out um, and about uh, the specific problem we encounter in, in doing the organization and how we solve them. So um, Simon has already introduced well, very well the, the survey. So basically the harmonization is a revised version of BHPS for date one and from wave one to wave 18 and is designed to be used together with Understanding Society uh, wave one to, to eight. Um, and this is, so all together, the resulting data set covers, as Simon said, more than 25 years. Uh, so what we did is like modifying the Understanding Society, the BHPS rather to match Understanding Society rather than modifying Understanding Society itself. Uh, we did make some little changes to Understanding Society to make it easier to work with BHPS, but it's basically BHPS which has been changed. So compared to the standalone BHPS uh, data set, the, the new harmonized data set, BHPS data set, has a few differences. We will uh, go through them later. So there is quite a bit uh, of research using um, Understanding Society and BHPS together. And that was there also before uh, the release of the harmonized BHPS Understanding Society dataset. Uh, and this research has three common characteristics. The first one is it's quite new, because Understanding Society is quite new in itself. 
The second one is quite cutting edge, and the third one is interdisciplinary. But so these are all, from a point of view, very positive things. But there is also a quite negative thing, which is that it was extremely time consuming. It was possible, obviously, but it was quite time consuming before the release of this uh, harmonized data set. So with this harmonized data set, we really want users to find it easier to use um, these two data sets together, which are designed to be used together. But um, yeah, it was not that easy in the past. So um, I do think that this type of data set opens for the hits characteristic opens a lot of new opportunities and exciting opportunities for research. In particular, I kind of listed eight big top type of topics uh, that people have uh, addressed and started thanks to um, the use of the combined use of BHPS in understanding society. So, for example, a very um, kind of topical uh, type of uh, research is studying neighborhood effects. Uh, since neighborhood characteristics change slowly over time, we, in general, to do this type of, to carry out this type of research, we need a few years. So you cannot do, use longitudinal information of just two or three years, and 25 years, it can become uh, already uh, a good number of years uh, to carry out this type of research. So here I collected a couple of papers on this type of broad topic, uh, mainly study ethnic diversity on various stuff, attitude toward immigration, and satisfaction about the neighborhood. Another topic which can be studied and should be studied using this type of data sets is studying relationships which may vary with the economic cycle. So we want to have quite a few different points in time to be able to capture different uh, points in the economic cycle. And here there is quite a lot of research uh, about the labor market impact of leaving education or non-employment, uh, uh, the relationship between unemployment age, scary effect of unemployment in the economic cycle, and also the role of saving and uh, the characteristic of saving behavior given the economic cycle. And all these have used these two data sets together. Um, we may want to study the long-run impact of behaviors and policies. For example, um, this paper studies the impact of saving behavior as a child on saving in adulthood. So we want to be able to follow a lot of people from childhood uh, to adulthood. And obviously, uh, in this case, we can uh, use the two data sets combined. Uh, we may want to study um, cumulative effects. Here, okay. so for example, the income health gradient when income is measured uh, over the life course. Um, another quite interesting kind of opportunity opened by this data set is studying, like, carry out normal panel data um, analysis but comparing England with other countries, very relevant countries, with a similar data set and long panel data. And mainly these countries are um, Germany, with the German uh, SOP, uh, Australia, with uh, Hilda. So like, these are the, yeah, the main comparable country to, to the UK. And there is quite a bit of research uh, making this comparison, studying as you can see, within couple inequalities and in women's labor market outcome, house ownership and well-being, transition from parental home to home ownership in, say, Britain and Germany, in job polarization in UK and Germany. And it's very interesting research because you have also, you can compare uh, uh, the phenomenon in, in different countries. Um, you may want to also study long-run trends, and here there is a lot, especially in uh, demography, for example, we want to study demography, what's happening in, in demography, say, from the uh, 80s, the end of the 80s to the 2000s. Um, we want to study social mobility in England, uh, transition into adulthood, labor market segregation um, in, in decades. 
or, and this is I think particularly exciting, you can carry out the search on epigenetic. Why is this, why it is important to uh, use Understanding Society of BHPS? Because the epigenetic data have been uh, produced for the BHPS subsample. So for these people you have you have these people covered um, the, from whenever they enter BHPS until now, until, and also you have genetic and epigenetic data. And there is, uh, for example, um, an example of this type of research is this paper, is, which is uh, Arena at the moment, so, uh, on uh, socioeconomic position and uh, accelerated DNA methylation, methylation age. Finally, um, you may want to study subsamples, relatively small subsample of the population where is easy and is um, is is you want to you want to have uh, more waves of data. So you have also more sample size. You can observe uh, more like changing phenomen phenomena. And for example, these are two examples on. Um, um, adolescents and um, retired people. So how does this machine work? So basically when we decided how to harmonize the BHPS and understand the society, we thought it was good to follow a valuable for first approach. This is not the only possible approach, but we, this is the approach we thought it was best. So basically what we did, we First, search for potential matches between one or a few BHPS variables and a understanding society variable. Then we assess the comparability of these uh, two variables, and then only variables meeting a preset standard of comparability. For example, they have or very they have the same or highly similar question wording and routing have been considered harmonizable. So. This general principle have, has um, quite a few consequences. The first consequence is that the, this is an ongoing project. So the number of harmonized variables is likely to increase over time and will increase and is already increasing over time because new matches can be found, made possible, users can just uh, send us information and requests and we try and accommodate them. But we will, in spite of this kind of change over time of the data set, we will always try to keep the quality of the harmonization roughly constant. So we don't want to harmonize everything is possible to, everything we can kind of harmonize, but we want to have good quality information, um, harmonized information. We have, this is for this reason, we have quite restrictive criteria for harmonization. And for this reason, we have quite minimal data recording because we don't attempt um, quite uh, like known uh, structure type of harmonization. And uh, also, valuable renaming is also uh, minimal. And when possible, we keep the same variable root as in BHPS. So for those people who are used to uh, use BHPS, the, the standalone one, it shouldn't be that difficult to switch to this, um, to this harmonized data set. And then we release harmonized and non-harmonized in the same file. This is different from, for example, other harmonization projects where just the harmonized data set, the harmonized variables are released. We release everything harmonized and, and non-harmonized in the same file as in the um, in the original data set. So we will have we have B Y um, B W sorry in RESP in some PageH SAM PageH RESP as in the normal BHPS dataset, but the new dataset includes also harmonized variables. So at the moment, so we have the, we had the first release with um, with uh, Wave Seven last uh, November, and these includes a, a bit the, the core of the harmonized dataset. So at the moment, the structure of the EGOAD, for example, is harmonized. And what does it mean? So it means that the original structure of the HPS was record uh, uh, was um, had the, as relationship the relationship 
um, coded as alter to ego, while understanding society was coding the relationship as ego to alter. So basically we just um, mirror the relationships which we kept the relationship which don't change, so spouse is still spouse, partner is still partner, but we mirror the other uh, relationship like aunts and uncle become nephew and niece, natural parents become natural son and, son and daughter. So at the moment we have a relationship B underscore BH which is very similar to the relationship D underscore D DV in, um, in understanding society although they are not exactly the same, but uh, in most cases they can use as, as harmonized variable. In the future we will, our idea is, provide, is providing the exact relationship D underscore DV also in the harmonized data set, but this is for future release. Then we have uh, X wave dots, we have a unique file for BHPS and understanding society which can be used for both. I think this is very uh, useful. Then we harmonized in RESP, in SAMP, in DOL, HHRESP, income and youth. And in this we harmonize variable naming conventions, variable names, variable response categories. Um, and then we have variable existing in understanding society only that can be derived with BHPS data by combining two or more variables. So in harmonizing the data set we had to cope with a few problems. So the first one, some of them were like more like trickier than others. So the first, um, the first problem, the first fact was that we had different naming convention. So we tried to uh, harmonize as much as we could the naming convention between the two data set, for example. Uh, the data, the variable names and data set names in BHPS had the, the, the letter for the wave while the understanding society had the letter for the wave and an underscore. We use now the understanding society waving convention but we um, naming convention but we have the, the letter B to the number of the wave to the letter indicating the wave. So we have BW which means B, uh, BHPS plus the letter indicating the wave and then underscore. And this is applied to both um, data set and variable name. Then in some cases variables with the same, same content are different names so you couldn't really append them easily and kind of use them as a single variable. So we would just, we gave the BHPS variables the understanding society names so, they, for example, look at this example. The first, um, the first battery of question was had more or less the same name, but in BHPS uh, it was using letters, while in understanding society it was used a set of numbers, plus the wave different wave naming convention. And we just uh, renamed the variables to match the understanding society ones. But also there were cases where the two names were completely different. And also in this case, so it was even more difficult for user to identify, um, to, to realize that the two variables were in fact the same variables. Now it should be much easier because the two variables have exactly the same name and the same naming convention. In this case, um, the, the original names of BHPS variables disappear. And, but we do think that the commentation can help you kind of navigate between these two um, the old name and the new name. Um, then we had variables with, this, with the same name with different content of coding frame. This was, I think, even more dangerous for users because users could have appended the data set and used them as the same variable when in fact it was not. Um, so to differentiate those, we gave the BHPS variables the suffix underscore BH. Uh, so you can make sure the two variables are not treated as the same variable. And then when possible we created a new understanding society type variable with the BH, by recording the BHPS variables. So for example, this case, for this first set of cases, we were not able to create an understanding society equivalent, so we just renamed 
the BHPS variable, such that you cannot be confused with the understanding society variable. While in the second group here, for example, GBSect, we GBSect in BHPS and understanding society were not the same variable, uh, but we, it was possible by recording the original BHPS GBSect to create an understanding society type GBSect. So we kept the original BHPS variable with the prefix, with the suffix, sorry, BH, and then we recorded uh, the uh, the BHPS variable to to create a variable which is the same as the variable in, in the GBSect variable in this case in understanding society. The last group of kind of intervention regards batteries of question. And we have quite a few cases where some batteries of question were just partially carried over into understanding society. So we want people to make sure to, to, to be able to use the, 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 the whole battery just in BHPS, but we also want people to make to use the, the questions, the parts, the part of the question which exists in both survey uh, in for both. So for all the years. So what we did, we kept the original battery of question and the questions carry out into carry over into understanding society are duplicated and are given the understanding society name. So for example this is in this battery and and best. So just three variable were carried over into understanding society so those were duplicated, so it's possible for everybody to use the original full battery of questions, but it's also possible to, uh, for users to use the three variables which have been carried over together with the Understanding Society um, variables. Yeah, this is about it for um, the characteristics. So, as I told you, the Harmonize project is an ongoing project, so we have a quite we have a short, mid, and long-term plan for for in improving the data sets. So, in there is a quite um, there is a new re release that we call 7.1 because it's our first like uh, between wave release. Uh, which is going to happen in June 2018, so quite soon, and we are going to release uh, HH Sump, a harmonized version of HH Sump, which was not harmonized in the Wave 7 release. We will make, uh, we will correct some mistake that we spotted, or also thanks to some users uh, in Wave 7, in the Wave 7 release. For example, we remove um, some cases where the suffix underscore bh was used in a non a straightforward manner. We will gonna add more individual questionnaire variables and quite a few uh, more derived variable. So I'm working on this at the moment. Um, in the future, which can be near future, for example wave eight in uh, in November we plan to harmonize pointers and identifiers. This could be also done by wave 7.1, but I'm not sure, completely sure at the moment. Uh, we will hope to have a full harmonization of ego alt as soon as possible. More harmonization of income variables, for example, the derivation of net income at the moment is not fully harmonized, so we are going to tackle this um, problem soon. Uh, we want to harmonize labels. Uh, we want to add more and more derived variable and uh, in the, this more long-term, long-run project, we want to uh, add more value-added data set. For example, the partnership histories, which uh, at the moment exist for separate file, we would like to turn it into a, a full uh, harmonized file. Um, there is uh, a documentation which I think is quite useful. It will also be updated. So if you have, if you're starting using uh, the data set, you can start looking at it and explains uh, what the data sets, the harmonized data sets can be used for um, and also by specific, a set of specific um, characteristic and how specific variables and uh, data sets have been treated. Uh, there is also a new website that probably 
well, I don't think we can open from here. We, I can open it from here, but we can try and open it later. Um, and this is a new data set, a new website where information on frequencies, question wording, question routing uh, is available for both Understanding Society and BHPS waves. And this is quite, it's quite useful, I think. Um, this project is a very collaborative project, and we had a set of uh, beta users um, trialing the data sets in um, July 2017, and this was very useful. So we really welcome suggestions from, from users. So you can help in many ways. You can provide feedback on the current state of the project, uh, or you can just let us know the variables you have harmonized before. Some of them are not probably going to meet our standard of harmonization. Some of them uh, will probably meet them. So if you have done some research, please get in touch. And if you see that some variables, you think that there are some variables which could be harmonized and we haven't released them yet, please uh, contact us. Or you can just say, look, you know, I have this area I'm working on. I do think uh, that is more uh, scope for harmonization. I don't know exactly the variables, but I think this is very important and it can be a kind of a useful uh, direction to look at. Please tell us. Or you can suggest improvements in the documentation. Or um, we can just, you can want to collaborate with us in both substantive or, or methodological work exploiting the feature of this data set or uh, on the harmonization itself. So please get in touch if you have any of these uh, questions and, and uh, requests. Uh, you can um, call, you can send an email to the Understanding Society email or you can just contact me at the elfumag at sa.ac.uk. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Laura, for talking us through the project. Um, if you have any questions about uh, the things that Laura has spoken about, on the webinar, uh, the go-to webinar sidebar, you should find a section there that's called questions. And um, if you post them in there, we will have a chance to have a look at them at the end of the presentation. So I'm just going to talk briefly about the accessing the data and further resources. Now, the Understanding Society data can be accessed via the UK data service. Um, in order to do so, you will need to be a registered user. Um, registration is free, and that will give you access to what we call our end user license version of the data. If you want data which has slightly lower levels of geography, um, the end user license data will only go down to government office region. You can apply for a special license. And if you're based at a Institute for Higher Education in the UK, you could potentially apply for um, the secure access version of the data, which contains the lowest level of geography and some other more sensitive variables. Through our website, you'll be able to find also a range of useful documentation and resources. I'm just going to quickly um, show you the website. One second. So here we have the catalog record page for um, the Understanding Society Waves 1 to 7 and the harmonized BHPS data. Um, if you're looking for it on our website, it has the study number 6614, and the, the page looks something like this. Now, as you can see, we have um, some detailed information. So you can see uh, the title of the study, obviously. You can see the series that it's part of. And as we scroll down the page, we can find some other important information. Here we have the citation for the study, and we do request that if you're using the data from us, that you do cite the data um, correctly, as you would with any source of reference. This way, the, um, the data owner can demonstrate their impact as well. As we scroll down, there's further information that really helps us to understand what this study contains. So we have an abstract outlines what the, the, the aims of the project are, and um, other information about the collection of it. There's also guidance on where you can um, find uh, the special license and secure access versions and what the differences will be between the data sets. The coverage in universe and methodology section gives you some guidance about the actual type of data. And we have these for 
um, all of the studies within our archive. So we can see here that for spatial units, um, as this is the end user license version, we have the countries available and we also have government office regions. We can see that with number of units, there are over 40,000 households included in um, wave one. Um, the documentation will give you a breakdown of numbers and response rates. Further down the page, um, it's probably the most important section, particularly when you're starting working with a, a data set. We have a documentation section. Uh, you'll find these um, on all the catalog records for data at the UK Data Service. And here we provide um, as much of the information and documentation for the study that we can um, for you to actually download and look at before you begin working with the data. So as we can see, we have um, a user manual for the BHPS. We also have fieldwork documentations and questionnaires for each of the waves. We have some study information and citation information with a read file just down at the bottom. And there we include information um, about any of the processes that we've carried out on the data with quality assurances um, when we've looked at the data as it's coming to us. And through this, you can really find information that would help you understand the data. And we would strongly suggest that whenever you begin working with the data set, you have a look at the user guides and the, the questionnaires and things, just to give you re that really good grounding in what's going to be in the data. There's also um, related studies and guides. So we can see here that um, some of the related studies include the WAVES 2 to 3 nurse health assessment, the innovation panel where the methodology for the understanding society is developed, and other data sets which may um, deal with similar issues. Also, we have a number of case studies uh, for this particular study. And through, in the case studies, what you will find is um, research which has been conducted and using these data sets um, to address certain questions. So for example, we can see there's one there, um, what predicts our level of well-being, whereby the authors have used the data in order to look at well-being. As you work with the data, you may start to produce um, syntax files. If you um, have done so and created some syntax files which may, you think may be of use to other users, do feel free to upload them. Um, you can do that here. Don't worry, they don't need to be um, sort of textbook perfect. As long as they're functional, that's, that's more than sufficient. And you um, will also receive a citation if anyone is downloading the data. So as you can see there, we, we do list the authors um, for the studies. Now, uh, just return back to my slides. You may also want to look at the Understanding Society um, page. It's one of the better ones, I would say, uh, not biased at all. Uh, the documentation provided online really is fantastic. Uh, you get very detailed information in terms of user guides and data set documentation. It's all searchable and it's very, very easy to use. Uh, you can see there's the web page just at the bottom there. Uh, it's understandingsociety.ac.uk slash documentation and then slash the main stage and that will show you the uh, documentation that relates to the, the main survey. Um, and as you can see on the right hand side, we have um, access to the user guides, the questionnaires, data tech documentation, etc. Now, if you're looking for help um, with the Understanding Society data, you can use the user support forum, uh, which you can access by going to data docu and documentation and then selecting the highlighted user support forum. All you will need to do is very quickly register in order to post um, an issue. So if there's a problem that you're having with the data, you can ask a question in there and someone from the Understanding Society team uh, will get back to you with an answer. It may also be worth as well exploring the forum uh, for questions, say if you have a particular issue, to see whether that question has already been asked. Um, it may well be that there's something that in, in there which will answer your question. But if you can't find it, um, do feel, of course, free to actually post a new question. Now, we also provide some support um, for using the Understanding Society data, uh, and we can certainly help when there's uh, issues to do with, say, data quality or things in the data that perhaps are not clear. If you want to contact support um, at the UK Data Service, you can do so through our website. 
you can see the link there, ukdataservice.ac.uk slash help. And from there, you'll have a list of forms that you can fill out depending on the nature of the, um, the support that you require. So there will be a form uh, that looks at, say, accessing data or understanding and using data. Fill in the correct form, and that goes off to the correct team here at the UK Data Service, and they'll be the people who are best placed to get back to you with an answer. We aim to have an, an answer or a, a response to your query within three working days. Um, it may take a little bit longer if we have to go and investigate a matter or something like that, but we will keep you informed of what we were doing. You can also follow us using our JISC mail service, which you can do at um, by going onto JISC mail and looking for the UK data service. We contact this um, mailing list once a week and we outline new data sets and updated collections in the archive. So if you're waiting to see when the next wave of Unsang Society is going to be available, if you sign up to that, you'll get a weekly email with all the data sets um, that have been added that week or any updates we have to them. You can also use Twitter. Um, we're at UK Data Service if you have a particular question. Um, you can also speak to the team at ISA uh, on the Unsang Society team at, at U Society. And we have a Facebook page as well. Um, as you can see there. Now, we've got time for questions, so if you do have any questions, please do um, put them in the question box on the right-hand side, and we will certainly do our best to um, answer them. If we don't have time to answer your question, or it's something that we have to go away with, we will email you with an answer afterwards. Uh, the, as mentioned before, this webinar will be available on our YouTube channel um, within a, f a few working days. Um, so if you look for us on YouTube, um, our channel is UK Data Service, you'll be able to revisit this webinar and um, listen to it as much as you'd like. Okay, so, well, thank you very much for joining us. Um, thank you very much to Laura for joining me. Goodbye, everyone.